Okay, so now let's create here our cut uh, data. So for this case, let's create a new package and let's just call this cut. And inside here, we want to create a new coding class and we can just call this cut view model. And this is going to directly inherit from the view model class. Okay, so for this case, we can pass in here repository. So for a case, let's just call this food repo. And because this is just an object, we can easily just pass it directly here. So the first case, I want to create several states that we can use. So we can use here a state. So I have here a string template for creating a state. So this is just really easy. So for a case here, we're just going to call this order line. And for the, uh, for the state here, it's going to be for the type, it's going to be a list of order line. Okay, so here we can call our folder repository. And this one is going to be our start data. So we want to import this. So basically here we are declaring a state. So this is a mutable state. And this one is the immutable state, which you can easily expose it to the UI and use it. Okay, so here let's create a function that is going to increase the folder account. So we can just call this increase. So here we can get the food ID. That is just going to be a long. Now for this case, we can just get the current count. Now let's get our order values. Okay, so after we get this, we can just get the item. So we can compare if this is going to be equal to the food ID, which we're going to supply it. Now, after that, we can use here a function that is just called the count in order to give us the total number of counts. Okay, so we can create a separate function that is going to help us to update the food count. So let's create here a private function. And the count is going to be of type int. Okay, so we can get the order line. And now we want to change it so we can use the underscore order line. Let's use here a map function in order to map through this. So we can use here an if statement and check if the food ID are going to be equal. It's going to be equal to the food ID that we are going to supply. So if that is the case, so we can just copy it. So let's change here the count. And for the count, we can just pass in here the count bit. And else if this is not the case, then we can just return it because we are not having a database that we have to update directly to a database so we are just updating it through a view model here and this is just for demonstration purposes okay now let's just go back inside here our current count so for this case we can just call our update count function and here we can pass in the food id and we can copy here the count which we have so let's just call the current count and we want to add by one now let's just duplicate this So the first case we want to get that particular id okay so we can get here the current count so if the current count is going to be equal to one basically the item we want to remove it and if we have more than one then we want to update that particular count instead of adding here so we can just remove it so for this case we decrease the that particular count and if the current count is going to reach to one then we want to remove it we don't want to keep that zero because we cannot decrement this so the user directly want to uh, remove that particular item so for this case we can create another function here and here we can pass in the food id so we can call here our order lines so we have here dot value and here we can call order lines we want to filter this so we can just filter Okay, so we can just remove that thing the, that is not equal to this. So for this case, we can easily just remove this. So let's just go directly here and we can call here our remove food item. Now we can pass in here the food ID. Okay, so our view model here is complete. So the next case here, I want to go directly inside here our cart. So I want to add one component here, which is 
going to be crucial so let's just create here a component and this one is going to be a swipe to dismiss composable so we want to dismiss our content if the user want to dismiss this particular uh, content so we can create a swap to so let's create here a new composable okay now let's call this swap to dismiss item Okay, so these are the parameters which I want. So we are going to pass in the modifier, the direction in which we want to have the dismiss, the intertransition background, and also the content. So for this case, let's get the dismiss state first. So we can just call this dismiss state. Now we can call here dismiss state, and we want to check is dismissed. And here we can pass in the direction which we want. And for direction is dismiss and to start. Now the next case here is to check the offset. And here we want to check the dismiss state. Okay, so for a dismiss state, we can use here the animated visibility in order to check this. If it's visible, now we can check is dismissed. And if this is true, then we can just show here our content. Okay, let's pass in here the modifier and the intertransition. Okay, so let's just define here the exit. So we can shrink vertically. And this one is going to be the exit transition and here we can call expand vertically okay and here we can pass in here the exit transition and here we want to pass in okay so we have to pass in here the state okay so these are so here we can just pass in here background and also a dismiss content here so we can pass in here the content and we can invoke it by passing here is dismissed in order to check this okay so here our swipe to dismiss is complete so the next case let's deal with creating the actual cut content okay so for this case let's insert here a new coding class or file Okay, now let's create here composable and let's just call this cut. Okay, so if you're having problem with this, you can just import this dependency here, which we have is the life cycle view model. Okay, so the first case, we have to get the order lines. And here we can use our view model and actually get the order lines. And we want to collect. Okay, so we want to collect here as a state with life cycle. But here we can see we don't have the dependency, so we can easily just click this add and import dependency. So for a case, let's just click this dependency here and the grader is going to build and get us with that particular dependency. Okay, so here our import is added. So for this case, we can just import this set and get values. So for this case, we are using here with a state with the life cycle. So even if we have configuration changes, then we are going to still keep our state. Okay, so the next case is we can get the inspired cut. So here basically we are just using a remember directly. 
So you could have the data this arising from a database or in a cloud somewhere you have stored your data. So for a case, we are just going to use this uh, this food repo, get inspired by cart. Okay, so for this case, let's create here our scaffold. And here basically we can pass in here the padding values. Okay, so I want to create a separate composable for uh, keeping this stateless. So for this case, we can just hoist our state up to this composable. So let's create another composable. And let's just call this cut. Okay, so here we're going to get the order line. Okay, so here we have our item. So for this case, I want to create here a surface. And for this case, we have our data inside our box. So let's create here a composable that is going to be the cut content. So let's create another composable and call this cut content. So inside the cut content, I want just to copy this. Okay, so the first case I want to get the resource. So when we want to get our string resource and other things, we can use our local current. Now the next case is we have created a string resource that is going to help us to format. Okay, so we want to Change this if the size is going to change for our order lines, and also we can pass in here our resource. Okay, so let's just call here our resource. And we already added this quantity string, so we can just now get the prolos. Okay, so this one is going to help us to format this. So you can see we have here our prolos that we're going to use for in terms of quantity if we have one and more than one item. So this one is going to be formatted differently. So for this case, let's continue. Now to display everything, we are going to use a lazy column. So let's create here a lazy column. And here we can pass in the modifier. Okay, so let's pass in here the item. And the first case, we want to display a spacer here in order to accommodate everything. So for this case, let's pass in here a modifier. For our, our top uh, offset here, so we can call here window inset. Now let's add here a text that is just going to be the title of our text. Okay, here we can use our string resource. So for this case, we can just call here our dot strings and we want to get the cut order head. So the next case here, we can pass in here the food count. We want this to have the max line of one. And if we have any overflow, so we can give it ellipsis. Okay, so here we are giving a height and also the padding and we want to wrap the content height in order to accommodate everything. So our first item here is actually complete. 
So the next case here is to provide the items. So we can use here the items with the list. Now let's just pass in here the order lines. And here we are going to receive our order. So let's change this because this one is going to be more than one item. So let's add here an S. Okay, so you can do a lot with this particular offset. So we know that a, a particular item has been changed. So for this case, we can just change different things. So for a case, we're just going to check here if the offset is going to be, uh, for example, less than 100. Okay, so let's add here an else statement. Now, after that here, we can just pass in here a box in order to change our particular uh, color here. So let's give it fill max. And lastly, let's give it a background. And here we can give it the back. Okay, inside here now we have our cut content. So we can create here a separate composable for this. So let's create here a composable and let's just call this cut item. Okay, so inside here I'm going to have this particular uh, parameters. So we have the order lines, remove, decrease, increase, food item click, and also the modifier. Now for this case, we have to get the food item. So we can just call this food item. Get these order lines. So here we can just remove this S in order to give it a a pull one so order line and we want to get the food item now here we're going to use a constraint layout in order to display our items so you can use any particular layout structure so for a case a constraint layout is going to be a uh, really crucial for a case so let's give this constraint layout here okay so we want first to fill the max width So here we can use this particular color scheme in order to add for our background. Also, let's give it a padding horizontally. Okay, so in constraint layout, you have to create uh, references in order to reference particular views inside your constraint layout. So for this case, we have to create here this. So I'm going to use this divider image name tag price spacer and more in order to create our references. So if you don't know more about uh, constraint layout in JEPA Compose, I have two separate videos that explains this in more detail. So the link you can find it in the description or you can just check it out through my channel. I have these videos explaining in more detail about constraint layouts. Okay, so the next case inside here, my constraint layout, I want to create chains. So this one are going to help me align the items in a particular order. So here I'm going to create a vertical chain of these particular tags and the chain style is going to be packed. So you can check out the video in order to learn more about constraint layouts. Okay, so for this case, the first case, I want to display the food image. So we can create here a food image. And here now we can use our food item. And we want to use the image URL. And for content description, we can just pass it to be null. is we want to create a name of this particular food item so for this case let's create a text
the next case is we want to pass in here the modifier. Now we can use the constraint as, and this one we can just call name. Okay, so the next case here is I want to display the icon, which is going to be the icon that is going to help us to remove this particular item. So we can create here an icon button. And whenever we click here, we can just call remove. And we want to constraint it as The next case here, let's create our tagline. So the tagline is going to be below here. So we can use a text. And we want to pass in here the tag. Okay, so we can link it to the start, for example. Okay, so our tagline here is completed. So the next case, I want to create here a spacer that is going to create a space between these and the prices. So we can create here a modifier. Let's give it a height of 8 dp. Okay, so at the end here, what we want to do is to give Okay, so our image is actually uh, completed. So the next case is we want to create our quantity selector. So we already did in the previous parts. So now we can just call here our quantity selector and reuse this composable. Okay, so here we can just call our order line. And we want to get the count. Okay, so our cutter item is actually completed. So on the next case, let's just directly go to our item here where we call this. Okay, now we have here our first item completed the subtotal. So the next case, let's create another row.
another case i'm just going to copy this let's press ctrl c okay so instead of subtotal here we can just give it shipping and handling and a line baseline okay so everything is looking perfectly and the next case here we can just paste this so here instead of subtotal we can just format price okay so we have completed the next item and here we want to give it vertically hdp also now we can just duplicate this let's press ctrl d so above this i want to pass in here a spacer and let's give it a modifier and we can give it a spacer of 80 dp and let's add a divider here and here we can call our subtotal plus shipping costs and below this we can just copy this and paste it here to have a divider okay so for this case let's just go back to our lazy column and here we have our item okay so for our subtotal here we can easily use here our order lines and we want to map so here we can use our, for our, our price so we can just call here food item and get the price and we want to multiply with the count so how many items are inside here then after we get that we want to sum everything that is going to be inside there in order to return one item here now the shipping cost here we can just give it 369 to be as default okay so our summary item here is actually completed so next here i want to add the last item that is just going to be the food collections so for this case we can just call here food collection okay so here we can pass in the inspired by cut and on food click it 56 dp so that we cannot obscure it with the uh, so i think almost our cut item here is complete okay so inside here we can just call our cut content and here we can pass in the order line okay and here we can pass in a modifier And we can align to the top center. This case here, which I want to do is to add the destination bar, which we already created from the previous part. So we can pass in here destination bar. And I want to copy this. And here I want to align it also to the top center. Here, what I want to do is to create a checkout bar. So we can just go below here. And let's create a new composable. And we can call this checkout let's make this private Okay, so after we do that then we can provide here a text for our button so our button is just going to
So let's go directly here below our destination bar. Can you see our checkout bar? And Okay, so for our case here, let's just go directly inside here our scaffold and call here our cart. And here let's pass in our order lines. So for remove food, we are going to use our view model. And here we can call remove food item. Also here we can use our view model. And here we want to increase, uh, decrease, so we can call decrease food count. And also here, we can do similarly. Okay, so I think here our cart item is complete and everything is looking perfectly. So the next case here is to connect the cart with the uh, particular uh, navigation scheme which we have. Okay, so now here our cart is completed. The next case is let's modify our navigation. So let's press Ctrl E here and go to our navigation. Okay, so I want to create an extension function that is going to help us to navigate to bottom routes. So we can call here nav controller. Let's pass in here a route. So the first case I want to get the current route so we can call this current route and here we can call the current destination okay so we can check here if the route is not equal to current route so basically now we can navigate because we are not on the same route because sometimes a user can click to the same item. So for this case, we want to call, we want to launch single top to avoid multiple backstack of the same entry. Then we want to call res. Okay, so the next case, I want to pop up everything until the backstack and save the state of that particular item. So we can just call this pop up too. And here basically we can receive our graph and call our start destination. So this start destination here and we can call here server state and make this to be true. So this simple extension function can help us to navigate between items to inside the bottom route. So for this case, let's just go inside here and create another composable. Okay, so we are supposed to be inside here. Okay, so for routes, we can call here tabs. And now we want to go to the cart and call here our route. Okay, so here we're going to get thing with the full item clicked. Now we can pass in here the modifier and give it the modifier. So our cart composable here is completed. Now we can easily navigate to this. So the next case here is to modify our data so that we can have a bottom bar that we can easily use to navigate between one item to the next item. Okay, so I want to incorporate also the bottom bar so that we can have the navigation between uh, the feed and also the cut, which can be really easy to implement. So what we can do is directly go to our main activity and we want to fix this food ordering here. So for this case, let's just come inside here of food here. And the first case, I want to get the back stack. And here, basically, we can get the nav uh, controller. And we want to create the current back stack state. And here, we can get the current destination. So I want to have here a logic that is going to help me to show the bottom bar only on two tabs. And that is going whenever we are inside the feed and inside the cart. So sometimes we can navigate to a different place and we don't want to show the bottom bar. So for this case, we can just call here show bottom bar. And for this case, we can use the current destination to compare this. So we can just call here on tabs. If it's inside this route. 
or if the actually current destination is going to be on this particular route here so we can show the bottom bar another case is to keep track of the tab index and here let's use our remember okay so another case a user can be inside one particular tab and then they want to navigate to a different tab basically this one is not going to be reflected whenever we navigate by using a back stack so in order to keep everything in sync i want to use here a launch the effect and basically keep track of this so if the current destination is going to change so we can call here current destination and when it changes then i can just call here let's call our current destination and if this is going to be this particular tab so i want also to set our index at zero and if this is going to be a cut i want to set the index to one so this one is going to help me to keep track of that tabs and what we can do is call our tabs enum and call entries here in order to get these particular entries okay so for our scaffold here i want to show now the bottom bar so we can create here a bottom bar then we don't want to show the bottom bar okay so we can use here a tab row and we want to check if this is going to be selected and that particular is going to be the tab index now we can use here our tabs let's use for each index let's rename this to route and inside here now we can create a tab to check if this is selected we can just call here our index if the index is going to be equal to the tab index then we know this one is particularly selected now if it's not then whenever we have the on click then we can set the tab so let's call here set tab index yeah, basically we can just call our index the next case here i want to use an icon so for icon here let's pass in an image vector and for content description let's just okay so lastly here let's pass in the text When I set the tab index here, also I want to navigate to the bottom route. So let's convert this to a multi line. And basically, here now we can just call our nav controller. And we want to use the navigate to bottom route, which we have created. So we can just call here our route, which essentially is going to help us to navigate there. So I think here everything is complete and we have added the route and now let's try to run our application and see the changes we have made. Okay, so our app is launched successfully and you can see everything is looking perfectly. So right now we are here inside the home tab. Let's click to go to the cut tab. And you can see that we are navigating here. Let's click this back button here. And you can see now everything is changing. So if inside here our main activity we remove this so whenever we click the back button then this is not going to change directly to come to this particular destination here so our navigation here is working perfectly and everything is looking good we have completed our app so the next case which i want to do is to create the onboarding screen so whenever we launch our application first i want to show a splash screen then we can load here the onboarding screen if this is the first time for this particular user so inside here the onboarding screen we can easily navigate and see for example it introduce the user to our particular items and also here we can tell them hey you can easily get started here and we can click here get started and they are going to be navigated to this page here so let's do this next and finish up our application okay so the first case here what we want to do is we want to create here inside our ui 
another package let's insert a new package and we can call this onboarding so the first case i want to go inside here the models and i want to create the onboarding item so the first case let's insert here a new coding class of file and we can create a coding class and we want to call this onboarding item okay let's make this a data class the first case the onboarding item is going to have the image resource id and we want to get the text resource also which is going to be the title res okay so everything are going to arise from our resources so i want to create here the onboarding list so we can use here a list of so we are going to have three items so if you want more you can try to add them so let's create here the onboarding item Okay, so prior to this i did not add these drawables so i'm going just to add them here so inside here i'm going to insert the drawable and i want to paste this inside here okay so we can continue here by adding this so the first case i want to add the food one okay so the next case i'm going to add here the text resource so here we can use a string and we want to use the onboarding text one and for the part of title and here we can use onboarding title one okay so we can duplicate this three times and here we can just call delivery The next case which i want to do inside here our model is to add the data store manager so let's insert here a new class so let's call this data store manager okay so this class inside here we will need the context the next case here is in order to access the data store manager we can create a extension variable here so let's call this data store because if we create multiple data stores then it's going to throw an exception so this one is going to be of type data store so we already added this so the dependency for this that's why we are just getting these data types available here okay so here we want to use the preferences So here we can access our preference data store and we want to give it the name and here we can call it onboarding so this one is going to act as our simple data store manager that we can store simple variables okay so inside here i want to create an object okay so here you can add several types of key so for my case i'm just going to have only one key so we are just going to call this uh, boolean preference key and the name here for example we are just going to call this completed whenever we complete and then we can just save the data okay the next case let's create here a private variable and we can call this data store so what we can do is call context.data store and access our extension variable which we created so here we can create a suspend function for example to update our data so for this case we can call this save on body okay so here we can call our data store so the great thing about data store is it's using flows so we have to use coroutines for this case so for that case we can pass in here a preference so let's call here our preference which we're going to get then we want to get the preference key so we can call here preference key and get the particular key and check if it is completed and basically now we update our uncomplete status now we want to get the state so that we can easily read it so let's create here a function and call this get onboarding state ok 
Okay, so here we can call our data store and we want to access the data variable. Now, after that, we can catch first if we have any type of exception. So we can call here catch and get the error. If this is an IO exception, then we can emit empty preferences. So let's emit here. And if it's not an IO exception, then we can just throw the error. Now, after that, we want to map because we are going to receive the data here in order to return this. So the first case we can get here the onboarding state and in this case we can call our preference data store uh, so let's rename this to preference okay so here we can pass in our preference key and if this is nullable then we can just return this to be false then we can return just the onboarding state that is just going to be a, a boolean variable so here basically we have a flow that we are going to emit to our data user and then we can reuse it. So for that case, I think we can create now our onboarding screen. Okay, let's directly go inside here and we want to go now to our onboarding. Let's insert here a new coding class or file and let's call this onboarding screen. Okay, let's create another composer over here and we can call this onboarding screen. So the first case here is we want to get the onboarding. So we can just call this onboarding pages. So let's call here our onboarding items in order to access it here. And here is whenever we have the button click. So let's first handle this. Okay, so we are going to use a page state. So let's create here page state and we want to call remember page state so here we can pass in the page count and here we can use the onboarding pages okay so here i want to create a surface in order to keep everything and what i want to do is to change the color of this particular onboarding page so we can pass in here material theme and here we can pass in surface variant okay so we want to pass in here the horizontal pager so we can pass in here the pager state and let's give it a modifier okay so everything is going to be surrounded inside the column here Pass in here modifier and we can add here animate content size whenever the content changes then we can animate its size changes okay so after that i want to create here a row in order to display our items so for a row let's pass in here modifier And here we can give it fill max width and fill max height. Another case here is to pass in the horizontal pager. I mean horizontal arrangement. And here we want to arrange them in a space between. And here we can align it center vertically. Okay, so the first case I want to display an image here. So this is just going to use a painter resource. And here we can pass in our painter resource. Okay, so I want to pass those decorator. So I'm going to use decorator one in order to align it to the left. And here for the content description, because we're just passing decorations, so we can just pass in null. Let's give it a size, and the size here is going to be 30, uh, 37 dp. And here we can give it 300 dp. Okay, let's give it the alignment. And for alignment here, we can give it alignment.top start in order to align it to the top. Okay, so inside here, I want to create the onboarding detail. So we can create a separate composable for the detail of this onboarding item. So let's just go below. Okay, 
this so the first case i want to get the scope this means the curating scope that we can use so let's call here our curating scope now let's create here our column okay so we want to fill the max width so we can give it this modifier here and call fill max width another case i want to create here the onboarding image view so let's create another composable so for the image here i'm going to use a box let's pass in here modifier Okay, now we can just call here our image and we want to use a painter so we can pass in here a painter resource and for the id we can just pass in here the image res let's pass in here to be null and for the part of the modifier here i want to give it a height Okay, the next case I want to pass in here modify and this one is just going to be for displaying purposes so let's give it first the modifier now after that we want to pass in here the background and we can give it a vertical gradient let's pass in here the color stop and here we can pass in the color transparent and here we want to pass in the color to be white so this one is going to help us to give it that view so we can pass in here the image view and we want to give it the onboarding item so we can call here onboarding items and we want to use the image res for these particular purposes Okay, so for our text here we're just going to pass in here the text res okay so before we pass in the text res we want to give it the title so we can pass in here the title res and here we can change our style so let's use our material theme and here we can pass in our text res and instead here of passing the font to be bold then we can remove this and also so we want just to pass in here the style and the next part i want to pass in is the text align so for this case i want to justify so we can use here text justify in order to justify our text now lastly here i want also to duplicate this okay now let's pass in here our row now we can pass in here the modifier and we want to call this first wrap content height so that we can wrap the height then let's fill the max width okay so i want to pass in here the horizontal arrangement so we want to arrange this to the center so we can call here arrangement.center okay so after that i want to call here repeat and for this case we can just call here our page state and we want to count the page okay so here we can get the iterations okay let me check here the color and let's check if the page state is going to be equal to the current page so let's call here our page state dot current page 
this is going to be equal to the iteration which we are at the time so the first case i want to change that color so we can easily change this color by using a material theme and else we can use here material theme and i want to decrease its opacity so i can give it 0.5 f okay so after that i can create here a box so this one box here i can pass in here modifier can give it a circular shape and we can give it a color and we can give it a size and this one is just going to be 16 dp we are creating the indicators which we can use them whenever the user is going to be scrolling so for this case we can have this particular item here okay so after we create here our indicator the next case which i want to do is to create the button that we can use to navigate so let's first add here a spacer okay now we can pass in here an image vector and what i want to do is to get these icons and first i want to create here a text So this text here is going to be get started let's copy this and paste it here and here let's give it 16 dp then here we can leave it with 4 dp and here what i want is height okay and here we can create our icon okay so in part of the icons i want to use this auto mirrored Okay, so here we have our button, but what I want to do is to animate this button if actually we are inside the last page. So we can check here if our page state. And here basically what I want to do is to call our graph. we want to save this and basically here we can create a graph that is going to help us to store this so let's call this graph okay so inside here let's create an let in it variable let's call data store manager and here I want to create a provide function so here we can pass in the context so here we are just doing a manual uh, injection so we can just call here our data store manager which is just going to be our data store manager and here we can pass in a context and directly here we have to pass in this inside whenever we create our application for the first time so let's create here an application class so let's just call this and this one is going to inherit from the And whenever we create here application, we can just call here our graph. And let's call provide and we can pass in here the context with this. Okay, so here we initialize and also we should not forget, let's go inside here our Android manifest. And inside here, let's pass in the name. And we can pass in this for dot name here okay so after we do this let's go back inside our onboarding screen now inside here whenever we click this button i want to save its state that is going to help us to manage this onboarding state so let's create here a few model and let's call this onboard so here we can get our data store manager so we can manage this efficiently so let's just call here our data store manager and we can use our graph to access the data store okay so the first case i want to create a state and this one is going to check if actually it's loading so this is just a boolean and by default i want to make this to be true 
okay another state here i want to have to manage here is the start destination so let's create here a state and call this a start so for our start destination here we can use our tabs Okay, so inside here our init, what I want to do is first to call the timeout. I want to call a variable that is called the timeout. This one is going to be 5 milliseconds. Okay, so what I want to do is whenever we launch our onboarding, or to say that is we load our flash screen, I want it to last until a certain time. So for this case, we can just call here on onboarding state. So let's call with a timeout, basically, and we can call here our timeout. That is going to cancel this coroutine if this timeout is going to go beyond this. So we want to get here the onboarding state. And this is a flow. So for a case, we are not just going to collect, but we want to get the first item. And because this is just uh, required for the first item, so... Yeah, I want to use a view model scope. Okay, so this must inherit a view model. Okay, now let's use your view model scope and I want to call this okay. So after we get our onboarding state, basically I want to change our start destination. So for this case, we can call start destination dot value. Now let's check here if the onboarding state, if actually is not completed, that is. So let's go to our route here and create the onboarding route. And above here, let's call this onboarding. Okay, so if this is the case, then we can just call the onboarding. And here we can change the state is loading back to false. If we actually complete here so that we can manage this for the first time. And if this is not the case, then directly we can just go to the feeds because the user has already seen our particular item. So I wanted to use this view model here in order to help us for this case. We want to use this scope so we can directly just use here the graph and we can access the data store manager so let's just call here data store manager and save the onboarding state and basically pass in here to be true okay so our onboarding detail here is completed so we can just go back inside here and now we can just call our onboarding detail so we want to pass in here the pages so for this case we can get this page by using the page state so let's use the page state and we want to use the current page now here let's pass in the page state and directly we can pass in the button click reference now the next case let's pass in here the modifier i want to give it a weight of 1f and let's give it the and pass in here the image and instead of using the decorator one let's use the image decorator two and here instead of arranging to the bottom start we can just arrange it to the bottom end okay so everything here is looking perfectly so our onboarding screen is complete so the next case let's go to our navigation here and we have here onboarding route so we can also add the onboarding here so basically let's just press ctrl d and here instead of this route so we can just start with the onboarding route and now let's just call here the onboarding screen here we have a button click so we can call here on nav controller and we want to navigate so we can use navigate to bottom routes 
and basically here we want to navigate directly to the feed so we can use here on tabs so our onboarding screen here is complete so we have to write the logic in order to handle the start destination and also the onboarding whenever we are the first time seeing our application so we want to show this particular uh, feature so for this case we can easily just directly let's press ctrl e here let's go to the main activity okay so inside here the first case which we want to do is i want to get the onboarding view model so let's just create here a private variable and here we can use a delegate method here to get the view model Okay, so after we get the view model, I want also to install the splash screen here. So we are going to call here install a splash screen. And I want to keep this work condition that uh, whenever the splash screen is showing, if we have not loaded it, then we keep the splash screen until we load our data through our uh, data store. Because this is just a quick one. So we can check here is loading basically used a, a, a timeout so if we skip we, we, we go beyond five seconds then basically we are going just to skip this set condition and then it's going to set back to false and basically continue with other things the onboarding view model so let's pass in here the onboarding view model which we are going to use it here it's view model to decide here between the splash screen so for this case we can create here our start destination and here we can use by delegate method now let's go to our onboarding view model and for this case we want to get the start destination and we want to collect as a state so here we have our start destination and instead here we kept this hard coded so now we can just pass in here the start destination here we can pass in the onboarding view model now everything is complete now one thing which i want to do is let's directly go to our theme here and i want to add one more theme in order to change here our style okay so here we can add a style okay and here we can give it the parent and for the part of the parent yeah, which I want to use is the theme dot splash. And here we can add the post splash screen theme. Now, after the splash screen finishes, what style do we want to use? So here we can call add styles. And we can use this style here after the splash screen is going to complete. So basically, we are just going to show an icon. And after that, then we are going to use this post splash screen here in order to display this particular style after we finish up our splash screen. To complete this, we can easily just navigate inside here on manifest. And here directly, we can change the style. And we can use this splash for here in order to get that splash screen. Now I think everything is complete. Okay, so let's test here our application and see if everything is working perfectly. Now let's run our application. Okay, so we are seeing here the splash screen first whenever we launch our application. And then the splash screen is going to load the data. And directly we are going to go to this destination here. And because now we are starting from our onboarding destination. So here we can easily now keep scrolling. And as you can see here, we are seeing our data. So you can see here we find the food you love. Then we can navigate to fast delivery and lastly here we are just going to get this button whenever we reach to this point here and now we can just click here finish in order to get started so guys congratulations on reaching to this point so we have completed our application so we have learned a lot and created a lot of features so i hope you enjoyed throughout the process because i did so let's leave it here for this video but if you want to learn more about jepa compose and different aspects of android development so you can check my course the link is provided in the description box below so let's leave it here for this video so if you find this video helpful please don't forget to provide a like and subscribe for more video so see you in the next time bye bye for now